वेलकम बैक टू अनदर इनसाइटफुल एपिसोड ऑफ मिट्स एंड एप्स पॉडकास्ट सीरीज वेयर वी ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट इन द हेल्थ केयर इनसाइट्स एंड एक्सपर्ट डिस्कशंस आई एम योर होस्ट हेती विशा एंड टुडे वी आर डाइविंग इनटू अ कंडीशन दैट अफेक्ट्स मिलियंस वर्ल्ड वाइड व्हिच इज अ टॉपिक डर्माटाइटिस दिस क्रॉनिक स्किन कंडीशन कैन कॉज सिग्निफिकेंट डिस्कंफर्ट especially in children and infants and managing it effectively requires a fine balance between traditional therapies and newer innovations and to help us explore this important topic we are thrilled to have with us dr rani manohari uh, kopuswami uh, a consultant dermatologist and internal medicine specialist at prince court medical center in malaysia Dr Rani brings a wealth of experience in managing complex skin conditions and she is here to share her expertise on the evolving landscape of treating atopic dermatitis or uh, from the role of topical corticosteroids and to the latest in non steroidal uh, treatments so Dr Rani welcome and it is a pleasure to have you with us hi uh, thank you for having me Thank you. So let's start di- uh, right in, doctor. So could you share with us the historical significance and efficacy of topical corticosteroids in managing atopic dermatitis, and how do they compare with newer treatments like crisoborol and other PDE for inhibitors? Okay, so um, I think topical corticosteroids, or for short term, we call them TCS. has been a cornerstone in treatment uh, of atopic dermatitis since the introduction i think since the 1950s or so since the mid 20th century and the widespread use of it has actually revolutionized the treatment of uh, atopic dermatitis why because as we know atopic dermatitis is a chronic inflammatory skin condition so topical corticosteroids have a potent anti-inflammatory effect and has the ability to quickly alleviate symptoms such as redness itching so um that's how it, that's how it's been a cornerstone of treatment um but now um i think with the evolution of time treatment has also uh, changed and uh, when we talk about topical corticosteroids yes they are great they work fantastically for atopic uh, atopic dermatitis but with the evolution of uh, treatment you also see abuse of treatment or overuse of these products so mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of steroid phobia now and if you go across online you see so many uh, videos on social media especially on top of steroid withdrawal so on and so forth so how does this come about probably because of prolonged usage of these topical corticosteroids without supervision uh without a doctor advising them on how much and how long to use it and the potency of the steroids so there are many levels of potency when it comes to topical corticosteroids so it's important to know how potent is it how to apply how much to apply and how long to apply for so these are very important and now uh, we also have novel therapies newer non steroidal treatments uh, such as uh, pde4 inhibitors such as crisoborol and also calcineurin inhib- inhibitors like prolimus pemacrolimus uh, so these are all new treatments uh, that are approved for treatment of uh, mild to moderate uh, atopic dermatitis and have just as much efficacy as uh, topical corticosteroids except perhaps the cost is always in question the cost is higher Yeah, so it means that uh, it is better and safe for for long term solution. Yes, it's safer. Yes, for long term use. Yes. Yeah. So on the in the same context, you know, as you also mentioned the concerns about the long term steroids like uh, skin thinning and rebound effects uh, that has come to my mind. So how does this influ- influence your treatment decision in mild to moderate t- cases of atopic dermatitis? Okay. So. Um... When we talk about steroids again we have to use them very cautiously in special areas of our body where the skin is thinner and more sensitive such as our face the neck uh body folds uh, the genitalia and all the, these areas are highly sensitive so again the potency of the steroid comes into question how much to apply how long to apply and the type and 
so um uh, so when it comes to treatment areas such as this we tend to uh, choose the non steroidal options uh, as mentioned before the pde4 inhibitors and the uh, calcineurin inhibitors so this group of drugs can be used safely in these areas for prolonged periods of time to help yeah. maintain uh, eczema so it is like balancing effectiveness and minimizing long term uh, yeah so the only thing is sometimes they, the, the onset tends to be a little bit more slower Mm -hmm. And topical corticosteroids, uh, they tend to have more rapid onset. So what we do sometimes is we, of course, we need to counsel the patients because of this. Uh, and also sometimes they may opt, so certain clinicians may opt to perhaps start off with a topical corticosteroid for a very short duration, perhaps just a week or so, and then, con and then continue with the non-steroidal option to, for maintenance. Okay. So now, what about pediatric patients? Because we see that atopic dermatitis is very common in these uh, in children. So uh, they can experience significant discomfort, and parents are often concerned about using the steroids. So, what consideration come into play when treating mild to moderate atopic dermatitis in children? And are there any notable differences in managing this condition in kids versus the adults? Um, okay, so presentation in children generally is quite different compared to adults um, because in atopic dermatitis in children, sometimes it may uh, appear similar to other skin conditions. For example, like seborrheic dermatitis or contact dermatitis, even transient like neonatal acne sometimes can mimic atopic dermatitis. So it's um, there's a there's lack of a clear diagnostic criteria that's specific to infants. So it's harder to differentiate. So this is when experience comes into play <laughs> and also, you know, uh, infants cannot communicate the symptoms. But what parents will tell you is the child is probably uncomfortable, rubbing against the sides, you know, because they're very uncomfortable, crying throughout the night. And also, um, when it comes to examination, the areas that are involved. So infants generally, they tend to have this atopic dermatitis rash over the cheeks, uh, their scalp. And then older children tend to have it over their body folds, like uh, the flexures, mm -hmm. like of their cubital fossa, their popliteal fossa. So these are the common areas for older children. So this is one, like the location of the rashes. I think this comes into play, the clinical examination. Mm -hmm. And then the challenges, I think this would, in because infants tend to have a skin that is thinner, more delicate, and they have a higher surface area to volume ratio if that makes sense and um, which makes it more permeable than adult skin so when choosing a treatment uh, we have to be very careful because the risk of side effects from topical treatment such as corticosteroid uh, induced skin thinning and so on and so forth is higher in them so yeah so this comes into uh, play as well and then again when we want to start treating the what do we choose topical corticosteroids or mm -hmm. Um, what you call the other uh, options that I mentioned but before we get into that actually the cornerstone of treatment for atopic dermatitis no matter the age is moisturizers it is a pillar in treatment whatever the level of uh, severity of atopic dermatitis mild, moderate, severe if you look at all of the clinical guidelines that have been published throughout the world whether it's the Indian medical guidelines, the European guidelines, the American guidelines, the Malaysian guidelines, all of us stress the importance of moisturizers or even other non-steroidal options of treatments that we have. But if the skin barrier is not strong, the chronically relapsing condition will just keep happening again and again. The flare keep happening again and again. Because at the end of the day, the skin barrier is disrupted. So yes, the cornerstone of treatment is still moisturizers. And then we go on to either a topical steroid and usually in children, we tend to go for very mild to moderately potent steroids only. We never go beyond that usually. Even if we do in selected cases, it's for very short periods of time. Oh, okay. Because they, yes, and they need to be constantly monitored and observed. Yeah, because the long-term side effects are also high. Yes, yeah. So we need to be more careful actually yes. in children. So, so the treatment also takes uh, more time to cure it than the uh, cortical steroids. Yeah, so generally when we advise patients, uh, we always tell them, okay, apply a thin layer uh, mm -hmm. above the moisturizer 
and we will try this for a week, maybe two weeks. At most, longest is 14 days. If it pre- if it prolongs beyond that, it's time to go see the doctor again for us to decide what is going on, why are the flare-ups still persistent. Uh, we need to identify the underlying cause. Right. Thank you for highlighting that. Now, doctor, looking ahead, what do you envision the future for a topic dermatitis treatment? And are there any promising therapies or new research directions that could further improve patient outcomes, particularly in context of mild to moderate cases? Ah, uh, yes. I think over this period of time, a great advancement in technology. Absolutely fantastic. We have so many options to choose from now. It's no longer just your topical steroids. We have uh, such advancements such as uh, biologic treatment, which are subcutaneous injections. And then we also have oral medications called JAK inhibitors. So basically what these do, they're highly specific, highly targeted. So they target the molecules that are causing the entire mess uh, in uh, atopic dermatitis. And sometimes, whether it is mild, moderate or severe, we tend to go back to how it's affecting the patient's quality of life. So if, for for example, if you see a patient who's, when you look at them, you barely see any rash, but they're just itching and itching and itching. And then you have another patient who has rashes all over, but it doesn't seem to bother them. (laughs) But yeah, more, more often than not, it's always itchy. But what I mean to say is even if they have mild disease, but the, it's a very uh, each predominant phenotype, uh, they still need treatment. And sometimes we, uh, and how much topical steroids are you going to give them? And then there's also a question of systemic therapies, which tend to be immunosuppressive. So now we have many great options, uh, which are not immunosuppressants, but they're highly selected and targeted. So you do not get the side effects of other immunosuppressives. So we have great treatment now actually that is so interesting to hear about and it actually it really changes the way we manage manage all the top dermatitis yes yes yeah it's i've seen it transform patients life so uh we don't have to rely so much or heavily on topical steroids and all and you know and suffer the complications of long-term steroid use so patients with chronic eczema have uh, hope really they really do have great treatment out there for them yeah, like like you mentioned earlier, just a basic moisturizer will also work sometimes. Yes, yes, yes. It's a cornerstone of treatment, really. You will be surprised on how well just applying a moisturizer alone will help to a certain extent. Thank you for that advice. So before we wrap up, one last question is with your vast experience, uh, what advice would you like to give to the upcoming uh, healthcare professionals who are pursuing dermatology? Oh, <laughs> Dermatology is a wonderful field. Um, a lot of the times I get some slack from my fellow physicians or uh, specialists in other in other specialties who think we treat everything or we just steroids. <laughs> that is not that is not the case at all. Uh, for the dermatology is beyond just rashes. The skin is the largest organ of the body, so you can just uh, imagine the number of problems that can arise from the largest organ of the body. And dermatology also covers hair, nails, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, even diseases such as leprosy. So it's actually very interesting. Um, I'm glad I chose dermatology. It gives me a good balance in my life as well. Um, But yes, I really do think if there's anyone who has the slightest interest in dermatology, perhaps take um, a sabbatical or even an attachment in a dermatology clinic to have an idea of what we see because our outpatient clinics can be very heavy actually and quite for- interesting <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was a beautiful advice though and as we wrap up today's session thank you so much doctor for sharing your insights today it has been such an enlightening conversation with you thank you so much for having me thank you and to our listeners we hope you found this episode helpful And remember, if you're a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions, do not hesitate to join us on the Medicine Apps platform. Medicine Apps platform is not just a resource. 
it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare so until next time take care and stay healthy